hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video guys i want to do a sit down i want to talk to you about an experience that we had as a family and it was a very sad experience so i just want to share it out and to remind you that god is there god loves you uh, god is always watching over you just trust in him believe in him and everything in your life will be perfect so uh it was on a 17th of January this year and we had decided to go and visit my husband's grandparents. They live in Nyahururu. So uh, we had decided to go and visit them just to take our daughter over there so that they can see her. It was the first time like ever traveling to see them for me and my daughter. But for my hubby, he amekuwa kienda uko. So uh, we woke up well. We packed our bags. Uh, we called an Uber guy and before we did that we had we prayed and I believe that this prayer that we prayed before we left uh, this house is the one that Ibetushikilia Ibetushikilia at that time like that prayer like really helped us a lot so uh, we called the Uber guy he came he picked us up And he dropped us at Nyamakema. If you're in Nairobi, you know Nyamakema. That is where we boarded a vehicle to Nyahururu. So we found a Nissan and it was almost uh, full full of people. But the seat that was behind the driver, it had a lot of luggage. So akuna uh, mtuangika hapo, the luggage was very much, like zilikuwa mob, zilikuwa zime pile up. So we sat the seat behind the luggage. Like ile seat conductor that is where we sat I remember telling my happy that I don't like uh, sitting where I can't see like in front so he was like this is the only car kindly because it was getting late and it it looked like it was going to rain the weather was not good at that time so I agreed and yeah we started the journey and I remember like at the when we were highway this driver was like driving so fast other cars were hooting at him like because of how he was driving and i was for me i panicked I, like anytime i travel somewhere and i feel like the driver is driving a uh, speed i always talk i always tell the driver kindly that's what i always tell them so um uh, on this day, I don't know why I didn't speak out because I had that feeling like I was not okay and I felt like everything was not good at that time. So I wish I listened to my instincts and I wish I just spoke out and maybe the driver could have slowed down. So uh, I didn't talk. I didn't talk because I don't know why I didn't talk. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, we kept on at uh, Kendlen at Safari Yetu and I was telling my hubby, no, 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 something is wrong. I just want like, at a further, we, we alight the vehicle, we go back to Nairobi, we will plan this trip for another day. And my hubby was like, no, relax, we are going to get there safely. Because my husband, my husband is used to traveling a lot. He goes to Kisumu, Mombasa, Eldoret, everywhere. Like, he's used to that. So I was like, maybe in Ile too, Wogayangu, but if he's here and I feel to Kopo, and then we're okay. I, I remember the there were people who were sitting at the back bench. They were talking about accidents. Those people, I, I don't know why they were talking about accidents. I don't know if maybe they also saw how careless that driver was. I'm not sure. I think that is why, because they can't just talk about accidents without any reason. So uh, then after like five minutes before the accident happened, I remember I told my husband, like, I mean, I feel too uncomfortable. Like, I'm not okay. Uh, I don't feel, I feel like unsafe. I, there was this feeling that I had that things are not okay. So uh, I told my hubby and he was like, uh, just relax, babe. Like, even we were not close to Nakuru or Naivasha at that time. Because Skinale area. Yeah, that is where the accident occurred. So five minutes before it happened, I remember I told my husband, I'm not okay. I'm not comfortable. And he was like, just calm, calming me down, telling me everything is going to be okay. And I was like, okay. 
Then five minutes later, it happened. It was a head or collision. A Nissan, the Nissan that we were in and a double cabin. So uh, it happened and at that time when it happened, I for me it was like a dream because I, I had already talked about it like five minutes before then five minutes after it's happening so i i thought like i'm dreaming at that time i didn't like maybe to you feel like maybe it's a dream that i need to wake up from but no it was not a dream um once it happened i remember i put my arm like this to prevent like my daughter getting hurt naizo kiyoyagari so i have a lot of marks here in my hand let me show you yeah i have those marks in my hand because i did like this you know i was near the window and i was holding my daughter and she was breastfeeding at this time she was breastfeeding and she was almost falling asleep so and she was breastfeeding and so when it happened i was so scared i just did like this to prevent the seat so i put my hand like this that's how i got uh, these marks over here and I remember after I did that, I looked at my hubby and he was, you know, he was sleeping. So when it happened, Ali and I Mbele and he was hit. Uh, a cancer could not bleed. But I didn't see any sign of pain from him at that time. And for me, I also didn't feel any pain at that time. And my daughter started crying. She was crying uncontrollably. And... There was now people started coming around the vehicle the way they always come to check if anyone needs help and i remember there was a guy who came uh to the window where i was and i gave him my daughter because i didn't want i just wanted her to get out of the vehicle so that i could just walk out and my husband as well i didn't even look around the other people how their situation was that time you just focus on you and yourself and your family I didn't even look around to see how other people were but yeah so uh and some people came in the car to help us get out and my hubby and his idea because he ended up karibu na mlango he was help like alibebo akatolewa inje and akayokapo uh akayoko beside the road so for me i was like kujeni mskume viti like come push the chairs so that i can I can stand because me i didn't feel any pain at the moment i was feeling like i'm just good i need to stand and walk out and you know i've been watching a lot of movies and some movies you watch you see a car gets into an accident and it explodes so that was what is what was in my mind i just felt like i needed to walk out of the car fast before anything happens so uh uh, the people came through the so when my husband uh, he took our daughter because you know at this uh, some situations like this is when people take advantage they can even kidnap your kid so my hubby when he took he he was given our daughter so I found him holding our daughter and my daughter was still crying and it was raining and so uh, me I had blood uh, blood had come out from his arm like i had a shawl i was now uh because my boob was outside i couldn't even think of putting it back so i had just put on that cover up and now the blood had so uh these guys came i told them to like pull the seats so that i can stand up and when i tried to stand up that is when i felt like my world has crashed in front of my eyes because i tried to stand my legs were not standing like like i don't know if i can explain it better than that like they were broken my both of my legs were broken in the middle and my left leg like the bones had already like come out of the skin so you could see directly the bones were outside for the other for the right leg like it had broken inside but i could make a dam or anything but you could see like in i don't know how to to describe it to to explain that situation but my legs were hanging like this but for the left one it was hanging and the bones were now showing like sharp sharp bones because they had broken 
So uh, I remember when I, I saw that, I freaked out. Ile kabisa. So yeah, I freaked out and I felt like my world is now over. Like, what what can I do without legs, you know? I don't want to think of I'll be in a wheelchair and all that. Those, those are not what I wanted to do. Those, those are not the thoughts that I wanted to think at that time, but they were coming in my head. Like I was now like picturing myself in a wheelchair and I have my baby who will take care of my baby, you know? Nobody can take good care of a child like the mother. That is obvious. Uh, so all those thoughts came in my mind. Like now I felt like my hubby will now like, you know, leave me and look for someone who's useful. Like I felt so useless at that at that time. I felt like I'll be a burden even to my parents because now my husband will leave me and I'll go back to my parents. Those are all the thoughts that were in my head. And I felt like, oh. Like life can change in a second, guys. Life can change in a minute. So uh, those guys took me outside, nikakapo beside my husband. And I remember telling my husband, uh, babe, sauta niyacha. And I was crying. Like I was crying ile kabisa. Me, I couldn't hold my tears back. I was crying ile kabisa. So I told my husband, now you leave me. You look for another woman who can walk. Oh my God, you know, and my husband was like, babe, no, I'll never leave you in any situation and you'll be okay. Like my husband was so positive. He's ever positive. Yeah, yeah, ata akikwa situation in kaaji, anakuanga positive. And that's why one thing that I love about him because he makes me like look at, at life in a much brighter way than the way I used to look at life before. So he akakuwa positive and he made me feel like, wow, I, maybe I'll be okay. Let me just be a bit positive. So there was this car that came and my husband at that time was still also complaining of pain. Uh, his right leg, alikuwa na pain, alikuwa sema nasikia pain, apakwa waist. So we couldn't know what the pain was because uh, he was not bleeding. So I, I didn't think that he was in much pain. So when we got to the hospital, uh, there was this car that came, took us to hospital. And once we got there, uh, we were taken to the emergency. And my, my husband was the one holding my daughter all this while. My daughter was crying. She wanted to breastfeed. She was confused. And she was cold because she had been rained on when we were outside the vehicle. Like, it was so bad. I felt like I, I was really broken inside because I couldn't be strong for her. I was also in pain and I was crying like a kid. I cried. So uh, once we were outside the vehicle, I remember we called uh, my parents. There was this guy who was so good. He like I'll to shugulikia and he a phone. I called my mom because I want. I didn't want to call my mom at first. I wanted to call my dad because uh, my mom has pressure at times. So I didn't want to break the news to her just like that. So I tried to call my dad, but he could not pick up his phone. So I called my mom and I was like, I'm just going to trust that she, nothing is going to happen to her. So I, this guy is the one who even talked to my mom because for me, I couldn't even talk well because of how much I was crying. So uh, this guy explained to my mom what happened and told him hospital in Yetuna Pelekwa. And yeah, now they were preparing to come. And it was very late. It was around 5 in the evening, 5 p.m., uh, yeah, in the afternoon. So uh, they were preparing to come because they needed to come to see us and also to take my daughter with them at home because my daughter could not stay in the hospital alone. And for us, we didn't know how long we will be in the hospital, especially for me because of how my legs really were. I thought that I would be forever in the hospital. So uh, I remember once they were on their way coming, I was taken to the ward because they needed to clean my legs, like to clean the wounds so that I could not get any any infection. So they did that. And then we were going to plaster mugu, and then I was taken to the ward. I was told I would wait for three days uh, so that I could now be uh, go back to the theater. And one is a tumor. You can have a tumor if you break a bone. I don't know how they're called, but... Yeah, I'll just call them chuma or, or roads, metal roads. Yeah. So they were supposed to put uh, those metal roads in my legs uh, after three days. And I remember before I was taken to the ward, 
I was asking these doctors because they came to ask us a lot of questions, ask us, they were asking us um, if we remember our names, what happened, uh, do you feel any pain anywhere else? And I was like, no, me, only my legs are in pain. And then they were telling me to do my legs, uh, my finger like this, fingers are me go. I was supposed to do like this, that I could know if it's serious or if I can be treated. So uh, I remember they told me to do like this and I could be able to do like this. Like my fingers could be able to move and I was so happy. Like they told me if your fingers can be able to move, then that means the, the nerves are still okay. So uh, we are just going to put uh, metal in your legs and you'll be fine. You can be able to walk again. And that gave me so much uh, joy in my heart. I felt like, at, like I felt uh, better. And now that's when they took me to the ward. And I remember at the ward, uh, there was this injection that they injected my me, upper kwa mgongo. And is it mgongo? Spinal cord, yeah. On the spinal cord. And I got, like, nikaenda numb. My whole lower body uh, went numb. And they did the thing they were supposed to do. And then I was taken to the ward. So uh, in the world, I met uh, this woman. This woman had been there uh, since December. Remember, I, uh, we went. We, the accident happened in January 17th. This woman had been there in the hospital since December 2019. Mm -mm. December 2021, she had been there in the hospital because she got an accident. Nayake nile alikuwa meka kwa barabara. Like, she had sat outside her shop and ile tu unakangwa njia ya duka unaotaka jua hapo then a car came from nowhere and just ran over her leg can you imagine so she was there like for a, a whole month even happy new year she celebrated it in the hospital so guys anytime you are outside there you travel you go anywhere and you come back home safely just thank god because people in the hospital are going through a lot you know so uh, i went to the ward and my family came my mom came my sisters and our pastor our pastor came and they prayed for me i was really like i felt like people like are there for me like they are concerned i felt so much presence i felt so much love from them and they prayed and then uh, they left and they went back home with my daughter and uh, at that time i didn't even see my daughter like i didn't even get to see her so uh they left with my daughter and i remember my husband was also like taken to the ward so me and my hubby were talking uh, with the phone all this time just chatting asking uh each other how we are doing and i remember some friends came like my husband's friend friends are really good like if you're watching this and maybe you're my hubby's friend like you are an amazing person like you came through for us and we really appreciate like my husband has good 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 friends you can't you can't say the same for me because for me none of my friends came none so from then from that time i decided to cut off all the friendship like i don't have a friend like they're not loyal if you can't come to see your friend in such a, in such a situation then why should they even why should they even call you a friend you know but coming when covid in konaon and meko see that is understandable because covid patients could not get uh visitors but now this is a situation i have an accident i'm your friend you can't even come and see me in the hospital or even after i came out of hospital you still didn't come and see me and then you out there calling yourself my friend then i don't want that kind of friendship so my husband's friends came they really came through for us they all got their snacks they they formed a group where now the people were what were gonna change though because we we had to spend a lot of money in hospital because operation uko see cheap you have to have good money and our nhif card was not working at the moment we had not paid for it because we never expected such a thing to happen so guys, if you have an NHIF card, kindly keep paying for it because you never know. And I'm not praying for anything to happen bad, but just pay for it just for backup or anything. Just keep paying for your NHIF card. It will help you a lot. So, so after three days, I was taken back to the theater.
because now this is the time they were putting the metal inside my legs so i was taken back and i remember once they were doing the operation my oxygen started going down like nikashino could breathe i was not breathing well and now they had to put me under the oxygen machine and now they finished the operation and i remember once they were when they were operating me like walikuwa na gonga hizo chuma hivi like no she's giving you chuma ina gongango au uko kwa i don't know that sound of metal when you are hitting a metal i was feeling it they were doing it on my leg i was feeling that and i was crying because now i couldn't believe how i was born okay my bones have been okay now i have metal in my legs you know before you come to terms with these things like it takes a lot it takes a lot of time so uh i even the screws when they were screwing i was feeling everything they were doing because they i was just numb the lower part but the upper part i was still uh okay so uh my oxygen kept going down they kept me under the machine and the operation was successful and i was taken back to the ward and still all this time i was still uh, using my oxygen machine and i remember like after two days i was taken to the nikafanyo scan i had to they had to do a scan on me to see if maybe i had any injuries uh, on my chest because they wanted to know why my breathing was going down so i was taken and the results came back and there was this doctor that came and told me that uh they are, they it seems like you have a uh, covid but it's not like covid i don't know even what he was talking about so uh they took me to a separate ward where i was all by myself and it was i was so bored because you no know, uh in the other ward where we were a lot we were a lot of people we used to talk a lot encourage each other some people were telling me they fell from a motorbike and that's how they broke their legs uh someone uh, and there was another lady who was walking in hills and she fell down and she broke her knee so like we used to interact a lot so now being taken from that ward to a separate ward in a private ward where i'm just alone and i was not even allowed to uh, get visitors because they wanted to see if it's covid i have so i felt so much bored in that room i felt like ah oh, i was so down i like you don't have anybody to talk to once the nurse comes in and walks out you are alone so i remember uh, once they took me to that room i slept there for that night then the next day uh, i was just there alone so i used to stay on my phone a lot just checking on uh, people instagram tiktok all that and uh, i remember that night the following day the night i remember i prayed and i told god God I don't want to keep uh breathing through this oxygen machine while other people out here are uh, are breathing like air that is free like you have given people free air why should they even be paying for air <laughs> and I remember that night when I prayed like that I felt at peace like I've never felt like that I felt like it's God's presence in my life I even told my hubby and even my parents I told them that I've never felt like that. After I prayed that prayer that night I slept well like I slept in peace. I felt like peace had filled me inside my heart in the in that whole room I felt peace. Like, felt like that is God's presence in that room. So the next morning the nurse came and once they wakani pima kona oxygen yangu had now been okay like oxygen yangu ilikuwa imerudi poa and i believe that prayer like really worked i believe that was god in my room because i have never felt at peace like that in my life so uh i work on talk oxygen machine because you know i didn't want to be in that machine because my parents were out here looking for money to like pay up the hospital bill because uh for one leg kuwekwa hiyo metal for one leg it was going for 150000 just one leg so you can imagine both legs that is 300,000 i have to pay for the bed i have to pay for the food that i'm eating there i have to pay for the medicine that i'm being given like it was quite a lot so uh yeah i was out of the machine and that day even my family came my mom was allowed to come and see me because now i'm okay i'm breathing okay so i don't have covid so my mom came and uh, akaniona and 
yeah i was super happy at that time so um i remember like uh two days later it's when i was supposed to be discharged because my the the doctor who had operated on me told me like i could walk so i was given stuff i'll try and insert a picture here uh, so that you can see that that is what i was working with I, oh yeah i all this time we were still chatting with my hubby and i was the one who was going to be discharged before him can you imagine like for me even when we went to the hospital i thought that i'll be the, he'll be the one discharged before me because it was not visible like mine so for me i thought like like maybe he'll be discharged before me so uh uh, the day came and I was discharged and I went through my hubby's ward. I just checked on him. And I felt like really bad because I, my family, this is my family, my daughter, my husband, me, this is my family. So I felt like there was a very big distance between us. My daughter is not there. Me, I'm, I'm leaving my husband behind. Like I felt... But I said, uh, I just talk, prayed to God and I told God that one day we are going to be back together again. And here we are. As you can see, we are doing good. So yeah, I was re I was discharged and I was taken home. And uh, once I got home, you know, my parents had not told me. All this time I was in hospital, I used to talk to my sisters who were taking care of my kid. And I, they used to tell me my daughter is fine. So when I got home, uh i found my daughter had sl had slept so i told them i need to see her because i had missed her it had been a week without seeing her so uh they so when they brought my daughter to me my daughter had a plus in one leg she had also broken a bone and they had not told me all this while when i was in hospital and i understand now why they didn't tell me because if they told me i could not like my mind could not be at ease so um yeah i understand why they didn't tell me so when i saw my daughter had plaster in her leg i cried eh, i cried like i had missed her so much and i remember she was breastfeeding so when i came back she stopped even breastfeeding she had uh, get used to this uh, cow milk and yeah it really broke my heart to see her uh, with that plaster but uh, within two weeks, uh, she was okay. Na alikuwa shia tolewa plaster kwa mgu. And even with that, within a week, my husband was also discharged from the hospital and he came back home. And he came back to this apartment. Like, yeah, ni bebo wa For me, I went to my parents' uh, place because uh, I couldn't climb stairs. You can understand my situation. I couldn't climb uh, all this way till here. And I needed people who will uh, be there for me and my daughter uh, through that time. For my hubby, uh, he stayed here with my uncle. Uh, my uncle came here, he, he was taking care of him, cooking for him, uh, and I'm saying I'm for exercise and all that. So, yeah, then after a month, uh, two months, that is when we came back here with my daughter. And yeah, we have been doing okay. Like for me, I've been healing well. Even when I went to the clinic, my doctor told me that I'm doing well and they are really uh, happy with my progress. Because most people like working is the metal in their legs, like uh, sometimes the metal rots inside or maybe he is kizani na mwili vizuri. So for me, I've been okay. Although sometimes I feel pain once in a while, but apart from that, I'm good. My daughter is good, completely okay. Her bone, uh, ilishikana, she's okay. For my hubby, is still using one clutch. As of, of late, I've been hearing him complain of pain, but I'm praying that once he goes to clinic, because he's planning to go to clinic next week, that uh, maybe at time your good news and maybe he'll be okay. Like, I'm just praying a poor. For me, I was told I'll stay with these metals in my leg for two years, so I still have to ngangana.
kujikaza so guys mkiwa postia content ya cleaning kindly watch because i'm trying my best i really love youtube i love i love posting here and i hope that you guys enjoy my content and yeah so that's all guys and i remember i forgot when we were in hospital because now my leg uh see what it was called moja uh we had our leg issues uh going to the toilet we were given a like to tulikuwa tunapewa ya kwenda kwa cho like you use it on the on apo kwa bed because you can't walk so tulikuwa tunapewa kitu bed pan so that bed pan is a, a something silver inaka tu cho hiyo shape ya cho but it's a silver thing so you just lift yourself up you sit on it and you do your thing <laughs> it was really really hard but i'm glad that i'm out of that and I pray that everyone that I left there is okay wherever they are right now cuz we went through a lot together we talked we laughed together like you know we encouraged each other out so yeah that's all I don't think they, there is anything that I've skipped but I just want to talk to you and tell you that some of your friends are not your friends like for me I got to know my people uh, through that situation I got to know people who can be there for me in any in any situation that I'm in in my life. I got to learn a lot about people uh people who call yourself they themselves your friend. Kindly just be careful because not everyone is going to be there for you. And I learned a lot like my husband's friends like I really learned a lot from them. They are really good people and I pray that wherever they are May God bless you. May God bless your families. May may you never lack. And if in case of anything, we also will be there for you. So yeah, and even for my parents, I want to say a big thank you to them for taking good care of me and taking good care of my daughter when uh when I was not around, and for even raising that money. It was a lot of money because uh when you add my money and my husband's money, it was almost coming to one million which was not there we didn't plan for anything to happen so raising a lot of money uh, was really really hard but i'm grateful for them for being there for us i really am so grateful and even for my husband's grandparents they came through a lot may god keep blessing them and keep uh, our pay my shamarefu so yeah even for my mom's friends like they were really there for us my mom's friends they came through and i really appreciate them for that and anyone who came through by prayers by uh, sending us something like that really meant a lot and we really appreciate you yeah that's all guys so bye i'll see you on my next video kindly remember to give this video a, a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed